answer. Because you are that, you are capable. You are gifted, and you are so unique. All of the things that you may hate about yourself are your strengths. It's okay to be soft. It's okay to be opinionated. It's okay to be different. And it's so okay to just be The world awaits to receive you. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's do it again. Let's do it one more time. Y'all know me. Bitch, I'm back. I'm popular. Bad girl Sundays. No, it's good girl Sundays. All right, all right. We are back. You know what? I want to get into this next story. This next story is about Usher. Let's get into Usher. Do anybody know what's going on with Usher and his ex-wife. Now, this doesn't specifically involve Usher, but it does involve his wife making a petition to drain Lake Lanier. Okay. Yeah. That's all I'm going to say. I support that. I support it. I support it. I support it. Black people going in for the kill. Um, the reason why I support it, not only because Lake Lanier has so many untimely tragic weird, scary, ghostly deaths, allegedly, not allegedly, go look up Lake Lanier in Georgia, okay? Gainesville, in Gainesville, okay? When I found out about that, I was, because uh, I was at work, I was working there, I did a contract out there. I was like, y'all got any water? Because I want to go to the lake in the morning or somewhere. It was like, yeah, you go Lake Lanier. I said, oh, okay. Well, some told me to Google Lake Lanier, and I was, I was haunted, mysterious death. People being pulled by the leg under the water. And then a little while later, that's when um, I found out the tragedy happened to Usher's son on that same lake. Okay. Now, Lake Lanier has a very, very, very tragic history behind all of what I've just told you. If you don't know, I got to tell you just a little bit. So Lake Lanier basically was a, a land that was owned by black people. And we're gonna we're gonna bring it up. That was flooded by the United States. I mean, well, by the Georgia um state of average the agriculture or whatever, because they wanted the land. Okay. So uh we want to go into a little bit about Lake Lanier. Hold on, before we get into the truck, uh, the tragic story of actual Usher's son. We want to do a little short. I want to. I want to find something really short. This is a thriller that someone did about Lake Lanier, but hold on, they got the dive here. Hold on, I want to get something good for you guys because y'all know I have to um, improvise. I want to get something good for you guys. Because, baby. We're going to show y'all what the hell Lake Lanier was. It was used to be called Oscarville. Let's get it. And now they use it as a tourist place. Our tragedy. Let's go. All right. Where I'm at, y'all. I got a lot up on the screen. So let's remove this. And we're going to get into a little bit about Lake Lanier and why Usher's uh, ex-wife wants to get it drained. The book calls for your business. Let's get it. Relative of Oscarville residents shares history of Lake Lanier is a Georgia landmark, but buried below the surface is the town of Oscarville. And now we're getting a deep dive into the town's history. Here's 11 Alive's Latasha Givens. 
When we started working on this story, we set out to track down descendants of Oscarville. Weeks later, we found a family who could trace back their roots four generations. They shared with us stories that were handed down about what the all black town was like, including the night that led to its destruction. Mm. It was set on fire by night riders after they say a white woman was raped. Then later, it was covered by the body of water we now know as Lake Lanier. May Crow is buried here at this Gainesville cemetery, but the trail of destruction following her death stretches into the land surrounding Forsyth County, buried beneath these waves of Lake Lanier, where in 1912, nearly every black resident was forced out. That includes people living in an old black town called Oscarville. The community was formed in the late 1800s during the reconstruction era. There was a very strong community feeling among the blacks about 300 kids, children, <laughs> that um, went to some of the schools that were the black schools, um, and it was uh, closely connected to the churches. Georgia history teacher Lisa Crosby says Oscarville was a thriving black community, full of carpenters, blacksmiths, and bricklayers, but farming was the top trade. So they really had kind of a miraculous farming growth here while the rest of the state was really struggling. But then residents were abruptly forced off their land. Now the flashpoint, I think, is 1912. This takes us back to the death of May Crow. The 19-year-old white woman was found dead in the woods near Oscarville, presumably after being raped. Typically, the answer to white girls being raped was go to the black community and just start blaming people. By nightfall, terror began to reign over Oscarville. So from there, um, the rage and hatred in the community um, Mobs got together and they were called night riders and they were um, riding throughout Oscarville and driving out the black community. And the night turned deadly, you know. They were waking up by fires outside, um, uh, fire bombs thrown in the church. Filmmaker Bob Mackey recaptures those horrific nights in an upcoming television series. Any, anytime anything happened, guess where everyone would go? To the church. Well, they attacked the church. People were hung, uh, lynched. Mackey's series features stories of direct descendants like George Rucker, who can trace his family back four generations to Oscarville. He tells the story of his great grandfather, Bert Oliver, and the entire family being forced off their land. Night riders came through. They had to leave everything. The main thing they left was property. My grandfather had a hundred acres. Rucker says many relatives died as they tried to flee. So when they got to the Chattahoochee River, from what I understand, they were told when the mob got up on the bridge, they were told that they either had to swim or drown. Most of them didn't make it. My grandfather, one of them that did make it, he lost some brothers and sisters. He says his relatives who survived settled in Gainesville. What my mother told me, buried all of them, he would sit and tell her this story and uh, he would just sit and cry. Crosby says whites in the area took over the remaining properties. She says Oscarville farmers were specifically skilled in raising poultry, which set the pace for Gainesville eventually becoming poultry capital of the world. You have a farm already going and you had free land, so you just take it. Rucker says his great grandfather married his second wife, Beulah, and they built this school that still stands in Gainesville today. By the late 1950s, the Buford Dam was built and Lake Lanier was formed, covering up Oscarville and swallowing most of its history. Many believe Lake Lanier is haunted because of the high number of drownings. We spoke to officials who tell us because there is an entire town that includes structures and even forest areas with trees that are 60 feet tall, it makes it more difficult to mm -hmm. navigate through mm -hmm. and someone can easily become trapped in debris, leading them to drowning. We have so much more on this story on our website. We're going to go a little bit into the haunting. It was just a little short story. But as they said, they had trees under there as tall as 60 feet. They drowned a whole town. That's what's under Lake Lanier, if you don't know. Now, let's put Usher Weiss back on the screen in the story behind her wanting Lake 
Lanier Drain. And then we're going to go into a little bit of the boogeyman stories, okay, guys? Because y'all know I like to look into that stuff. I'll be like, oh, it goes up in there. Usher ex-wife launches petition to drain Georgia Lake following son tragic death. This was July 11, 2023 update given to you by Hip Hop DX. All right. Usher ex-wife Tamika Foster has set out a to prevent further loss of life by uh, launching a petition to drain the same lake in which her son died on Thursday, July the 6th. So the anniversary just passed. Forster announced her effort to push for Georgia Lake Lanier to be emptied following a tragic jet ski accident that took the life of her son, Kel Glover, 11 years ago. Foster took to Instagram to honor her son as well as to shed light on the petition. Writing on this significant ju day, July 6th, we remember the tragic accident on Lake Lanier that forever altered my life. My courageous son, Kel Glover, fought for two weeks with unwavering strength until he passed away July the 21st. Today, we honor his memory by rallying together for change. She continued, let's ensure a safer future by demanding improved safety measure, better zoning, exactly, because it should not have had a lake there, mm -hmm, and removal of haunted debris from the lake haunted debris from the lake why because when people die suddenly and abruptly and they have a connection to the land um it's more story to that we have people who literally stayed there until the day it flooded and they they died with their land so we have spirits under there and we're going to go into that okay and she understands that that's why she said removal of the haunted debris from the land join me in signing the petition and sharing this vital uh, cause to, today to, together we can create a fresh start and bring about um, lasting transformation justice for cow so i have to respect that I'm going to put the petition under there for you guys um, and this link under there so you guys can see it. And I want to give you a little bit more understanding because it's not just black people who suffered tragedy at Lake Lanier originally, you know, and the land being taken. People die there all the time. So this is Scary Stories of Lake Lanier. We're going to do a short reaction to it. The Paranormal Files is from the Paranormal Files. They did this about a year ago. And um, yeah, I had the, the nurse told me like, yeah, I had saw something when I was walking by. I said, girl, if you saw a ghost on the bridge, why the hell would you tell me to go there? I don't want to go there. She was like, I'm just saying I didn't know, but you, you never know. I said, girl, are you crazy? 600 deaths, reports of ghosts pulling people under the water. Lake Lanier seems to be one of the most haunted places in America, and no one likes to talk about it. But today we're digging in deep into this spooky story. Hey everybody, Colin here. Welcome to Scary Story Saturday. I'm glad you guys are enjoying these little videos that I've been producing. If you enjoy the stories and the way that I'm, sometimes lakes take on a dark persona of their own. They come alive with the stories of spirits, death, and history. And that's the case with Lake Lanier in Georgia. Lake Lanier is a man-made lake or reservoir in the northern part of Georgia. It encompasses 59 miles of water and it's absolutely massive. The lake was created back in 1956 to control flooding of the Chattahoochee River and to provide drinking water for residents of Atlanta. But the story of this lake seems to be cursed, with darkness tainting the land even before it would become a lake. Before Lake Lanier was created, the land which now sits at the bottom of the water was lush, vibrant, and full of life. Lots of animals and wildlife called this area home, and so did a number of people. One community that once existed on the land that Lake Lanier now covers was a small village called Oscarville. At one point, Oscarville was home to over 1,098 black residents. It was a town where African-American individuals could really thrive, and they had built up their own powerful community in a county known for its racism. But events in the early 20th century would change that. In 1912, a white woman named May Crow was found in the woods near the community, beaten almost to death, and she had been sexually assaulted. She died a short while after the discovery of her body, and the crime was immediately believed by the local white community to have been perpetrated by a black man. So, residents essentially rounded up any black men that they could find in the area, and they arrested them. Eventually, four people had been arrested. A man named Rob Edwards, his wife Jane Daniel, her brother Oscar Daniel, and their cousin, a 16-year-old boy named Ernest Knox. Rob Edwards, shortly after his arrest, was drugged from the jail by a white mob and lynched on a nearby telephone pole. 
The crowd then proceeded to fire hundreds of bullets freely into his body while he hung from the pole. Soon after, both Ernest Knox and Oscar Daniel were found guilty of the assault and murder of May Crow after a one-day trial. They were taken from the jailhouse and also immediately hanged. It's estimated that over 5,000 people gathered from nearby communities to watch the hangings of these two men that day. And it's been said that the people there watching this brutal crime happen were celebrating. Even Weeks before these incidents, another local woman named Ellen... Just listen to the story because it, it's not only the horrendous thing you hear, but I want you to listen to this from a spiritual perspective. It, it does not matter. Like the color matters because we know. But when evil is done in a place in land, such as what you're hearing here in the behaviors, this is why allegedly the water is tainted with ghosts, haunted, demonicness. Okay. Just listen to the brutalness that went on in Oscarville to the people who worked so hard for that land. So it was love and blood tied into that land. And Grice had claimed that she had awoken and according to her, this is a quote, found a Negro man in her bed. This led to a local black preacher being whipped and beaten in the town square. He was also nearly lynched, but narrowly escaped being murdered. After all of this racial violence, a group of white men associated with the KKK who named themselves the Night Riders began to burn down black churches, black owned businesses, and black inhabited houses in the area in an attempt to scare people of color out of town. They would appear in the night and set fire to these structures or even fire bullets into the windows of homes. They would even post notices in certain areas, alerting folks that they had 24 hours to leave before their property would be burned or they would become victimized by violence. And eventually these scare tactics worked. Within two months, virtually every black resident in Oscarville, almost all 1,098 of them, had fled the area. It was essentially an ethnic cleansing. And Oscarville, after its abandonment... Almost. It wasn't everybody, y'all. Some of them stayed. Okay. Edmund became a ghost town. So, fast forward to the 1950s when the Army Corps of Engineers sets their sights on the area and wants to begin the construction of Lake Lanier. Property owners who still remained in the area were offered small sums of money for their property and were eventually forced out of the ancestral homes that had been in their families at this point for generations. Some 700 families and many businesses that had been in these families for decades were forced to relocate in the effort to construct the reservoir. And the money that these families were paid for their land ended up being too small of a sum to survive off of. Lots of these displaced residents were forced to leave the county and area altogether and find somewhere cheaper to live because they simply couldn't afford to live near there anymore. Now, this is what we're going to do. Let's get to the hauntings now, okay? Let's go. Now, on to the legends and hauntings of the lake. Lake Lanier has been a magnet for death ever since it was created, and it continues to be to this day. Since 1965, it's been reported that over 675 people have died in Lake Lanier. Many of their bodies have never been recovered. Another member of the Army Corps of Engineers, Nicholas Baggett, claimed in an interview that there have been hundreds of drownings and boat accidents on the lake. He also confirmed in the interview that some of the bodies are still there underwater. He also said that without a body, there's no closure for family members who have one of their own die in this body of water. There have been some victims of drownings that have not been recovered, said Baggett during the interview. In 2017, longtime diver Buck Buchanan told local media that he sometimes feels body parts in the lake during his excursions. You reach out into the dark and you feel an arm or a leg and it doesn't move, he said. And I don't know exactly what Buck is referring to there. I don't know if he's just talking about stuff on the bottom of the lake or if he's actually, you know, found and felt a body, but it's still just a very eerie quote. And the amount of deaths in this lake is just bizarre. And when you look at the specifics of some of these drownings, the deaths become even weirder. A lot of people have drowned in calm conditions, fairly close to the shore. Many who have drowned have been experienced swimmers who just randomly die. Even recently, a professional basketball player entered the water and never left it. Mm. Some individuals who have survived drownings in the lake have claimed that while they were drowning, they felt phantom hands pulling them down into the murky depths. Almost like the ghosts of the lake want to end the lives of those brave enough to swim in it. Other people who have survived drownings have allegedly claimed that they felt all of the air suddenly leave their lungs while they were underwater. Regardless, the amount of drownings in the lake is alarming, and many people in the area caution visitors from swimming in the reservoir. There have also been stories of boats just randomly capsizing in the lake. Large boats that one moment are floating peacefully in the water and the next are tipped over and sinking to the depths. Some boat captains have even reported running into large objects in the lake with their boats. But when they look down at the water to see what they hit, there's nothing there. Just the dark, open water. 
It's also been said that massive waves and storm systems will appear out of nowhere on the lake. One moment the weather will be calm, and only minutes later, your boat is in danger of capsizing. I don't know how the hell this could be happening, but based on the staggering amount of reports of this phenomenon occurring, it seems that indeed it is. Lake Lanier has also been a place haunted by strange disappearances, murders, and mysteries. All right, we went in and we just went in, guys. I wanted you guys to understand why Usher Wife is calling for the draining of Lake Lanier. And I agree to that, not only for retribution to us, the people of Oscarville, uh, black slaves, ex black slaves who worked hard for their land, but also retribution to all of these families who suffer in deaths at the hands of this lake. The lake is dangerous, okay? The real estate market often seems like a distant world where only an elite of experts is successful. In a time of so much uncertainty in the air and bad news, realist investing can seem intimidating. But today, I want to tell you that if you make the right decision today, you can enter the real estate market from the back door. Bad credit record? no credit at all. Do you dread the idea of having a home loan? Do you dream of owning investment properties? You are in the right place and right time because we have created a program which is a tax lien and deed investment online course of only 14 hours. This course is specially designed for people like you who have big dreams. You will learn at your own pace and everything from your home computer. This is your chance. Join our membership for $19.99 a year. What are you waiting for? Visit our website primetimehomebuyerbuyback.org and sign up today for course access.